Hello YouTube, Tom here and welcome to my channel Solo Dungeon Crawler and this video series How to Play Dungeons and Dragons Solo This series will explore the concept of playing a Dungeons and Dragons solo campaign This means playing the game completely by yourself with no dungeon master In previous episodes I have been building up a complete solo D&D rule set using the D&D BECMI rules published in 1983 and written by Frank Mentzer. So far, I've touched on choosing a suitable rule set, creating characters, generating random dungeons, tracking time, handling combat encounters and adventuring out in the wilderness. In this episode, I'm going to cover generating settlements. Uh, I also have some exciting news to cover in terms of providing my viewers with some PDFs that lay out the tables and rules for my solo rule set for your reference. This includes all the rules I have written up or copied into my notebook which I reference. I reference often in this series, so stay tuned to find out more. Okay, that said, let's get into this episode. In my previous video, which covered various topics on wilderness adventuring, I mentioned settlements and imparted a method for handling random hex mapping which included roads which sometimes lead to settlements. I also advised beginning a wilderness map on a settlement so I'm now going to cover a way to generate these random settlements. One such settlement will act as a home base, a place to start your solo campaign so your character or characters if you intend to play with a party can buy all the things they need before setting off on their adventure. The D&D &D rules cyclopedia says the hometown should provide the services most needed by characters including a place to stay, their family homes or inns, boarding houses, guild halls and townhouses, clerical temples, a thieves guild, craft and supply shops and of course a town guard to keep an eye on crime. You should also decide who is running the town. This may be a sheriff appointed by a baron, a town council, a mayor, a powerful merchant prince, a baron, even a high level NPC adventurer. NPC rulers should be at name level at least with appropriate bodyguards and magic. Before a settlement can be created for a solo campaign, the form of government which runs the kingdom will need to be established. I previously recommended the use of 6 miles per hex when hex mapping wilderness. This is commonly referred to as the kingdom scale, so the government will need to be established for the whole kingdom and this government will generally rule over all settlements in the kingdom. The perfect place to start with when generating a suitable form of government is the AD&D &D World Builders Guidebook. The AD&D World Builders Guidebook is a great resource for world building in a solo D&D campaign. The Kingdoms and Sociology section contains a useful table for randomly determining the form of government that runs a kingdom. Defining who holds the power is an important step in developing a settlement. I've copied the government form table into my notebook so it can be referenced whenever I need to generate who rules the kingdom in which a settlement is going to exist. I apologise ahead of time if I butcher the pronunciation of some of these, but the table includes autocracy, bureaucracy, confederacy, democracy, dictatorship, feudalism, geriatocracy, which is a government reserved for the oldest people, the gynarchy, which is a government of females, hierarchy, Mago Kraki, <laughs> which is a government of wizards, matriarchy, a government made up of the oldest females, militocracy, a military government, monarchy, oligarchy, this could be a government formed by a group of adventurers, pedocracy, a government formed by the most learned, such as sages or scholars, plutocracy, which is governed by the rich, republic, satrapy, uh, which is where uh, everybody is conquered by another government, syndicracy, 
which is uh, where the kingdom is governed by a guild such as a thieves guild and theocracy ruled by agents of a particular power. This table will be included in a PDF settlement generator included in the description of this video. This table will explain each form of government in further detail. If you roll a form of government which in the description indicates that government may exist as part of another, consider rolling again on the table to establish what the other form of government is. Now, a suitable form of government for the kingdom has been established. The size of the settlement must be determined. I flipped through various books in my D&D collection and generally, sizes of settlements are roughly as follows. A village, which has a population of between 50 and 1,000. A small town, which has a population of between 1,000 and 5,000. A large town which has a population of between 5,000 and 15,000. A city which has a population of between 15,000 and 25,000. The population and size of a settlement will largely dictate the type of economy that exists there, which will have an influence on the services that will be available for characters to have access to. I will cover this topic in more detail as I progress through this video series. To generate the population, I suggest rolling the dice. I have come up with some dice rolls that I think are appropriate and roughly based on the population ranges given in the D&D rulebooks. They also allow some crossover. For example, a small town could have a population of up to 6,000 people, but a larger town may have a population of only about 5,000 people. This is satisfactory because some settlements are more densely populated than others. To determine the population of a village, roll a D100, multiply the result by 10 and add 50 to the result. To determine the population of a small town, roll a D100, multiply the result by 50 and add 1000 to the result. For a large town, roll a D100, Multiply the result by 100 and add 5,000 to the result. For a city, roll D100, multiply the result by 200 and add 15,000 to the result. After determining a form of government, type of settlement and its relative population, the finer details of the settlement are required. The perfect place to start with this is actually the D&D 5th edition Dungeon Master's Guide. I know, right? Everything so far has favoured old school books. And now I'm reading the material from the latest edition of D&D. But in this case, the material is very useful for the solo role player. The D&D 5th edition Dungeon Master's Guide provides some very useful information on settlements. The book includes a random settlement generator which allows you to quickly create a settlement assuming that its size and basic form of government has already been determined. I have copied the random settlement tables into my notebook so they can be referenced whenever I need to generate a settlement for my solo campaign. A PDF copy of these tables will be included in the description of this video. These tables include the race relations of the people, the ruler's status, notable traits for the settlement, what the settlement is known for, and a current calamity that is taking place there. The ruler's status table is a great starting off point to generate a fully detailed NPC of the settlement's rulers. I will cover NPCs in more detail in a future video. Also, the current calamity table is a great starting off point for a quest in the solo campaign. The party or character might take the opportunity to root out a vampire infestation or solve the murder of an important figure within the settlement. I'm going to give an example of a random settlement now. Let's imagine that I want to start a new D&D solo campaign and want a home base to start with before I start my wilderness hex crawl. First, I want to determine the form of government that rules the whole kingdom. 
I will roll on the government form table to determine a result. I roll an 18 using 2d10s to create a number between 1 and 100. A roll of 14 to 19 indicates a confederacy. This means that the settlement will govern itself, but contributes to a league or federation which has the settlement's best interests at heart. Next, I want to know what type of settlement the home base will be, so I roll on the size table with a d8. I roll a 5, this means the home base of my character is a small village. I want to determine the population now, so I follow the instructions given on the size table. The population is 1000 plus d100 times 50. I roll 64 on the d100 and multiply by 50 to get 3200. Then I add the 1000 to get 4200. So the small town has a population of 3200. Next I roll on the race relations table with a d20 and get 7. This indicates harmony between all the races that live in the small village. I roll a d20 again on the ruler states table. I get a 10, which means that the ruler of the settlement is an illegitimate ruler. Perhaps the ruler is against the beliefs of the confederacy, which governs the kingdom and civil war may break out between the small village where my character resides and another settlement nearby. Next I roll on the notable traits table. I get an 18, which means the settlement has a notable library or academy. Perhaps this library or academy contains secret knowledge which is parallel to the teachings of the ruling federation. There may even be a mysterious dungeon below the library or academy which would make a great starting point for a random dungeon crawl. If I roll on the known for it table to find out what the settlement is well known for, I get an 8, which means the small town is well known for its tough warriors. Finally, I want to determine what the current calamity is in the village, so I roll on the current calamity table. I roll a 13, which indicates that the undead are currently stirring in the cemeteries. This is another great starting off point for a dungeon crawl. Perhaps ancient catacombs exist beneath a graveyard, or a local magic user is raising the dead to build an army of undead creatures that will invade the other settlements in the kingdom to overthrow the ruling federation. Let your imagination run wild when generating a random settlement. Use common sense and logic to tie things together and fill in the gaps. We now have a means of creating settlements for a solo Dungeons and Dragons campaign. These settlements are generated completely at random and can create unique and surprising ways to create potential backstory and narrative to guide the story of the campaign. But the work is never done and there are indeed many other opportunities to build the solo rule system further. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I have some exciting news to cover in terms of providing my viewers with some PDFs that lay out the tables and rules for my solo rule set for your reference. I'd like to draw your attention to my new blog, which I started to accompany this video series and provide viewers with full detailed write-ups of everything I have covered in this series so far. Starting with episode 1 and working my way through everything, I am writing the blog one article at a time, so bear with me as the blog catches up with the video series. The blog is going to include links to PDFs which have all the rules I have written up or copied into my notebooks so far, which I reference often in this series. This has been requested by several viewers and I think this will be very helpful for them. The PDFs currently include a character record sheet adapted for solo gaming, the dungeon generation tables and a useful time tracker as I work my way through previous videos I will create more PDFs. These PDFs will all be linked in the descriptions of their relevant videos and links will also be placed in my blog posts so keep your eyes out for them as I create them one at a time and enjoy each blog post as they are published. It's time to end this video here today, 
but make sure you join me next time as I continue to build the solo Dungeons and Dragons rule set. Thanks for watching this video on generating random settlements for the solo Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I hope you've enjoyed it, found value in it and would like to see more. Please check out previous videos in the series. If you haven't watched them, they will help to clarify things that I have covered and show the whole journey so far in terms of creating a solo Dungeons and Dragons rule set from scratch. Give this video a like if you have found value. If you have any questions or would like to discuss anything I have covered, let me know in the comments. Um, to ensure you don't miss any future videos in the series, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you are notified when I upload a new video. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next session. Goodbye.